great, the champion of her kind, Ms. Nellie Bly. Known for her exploits into the unknown, Nellie wowed her readers with amazing tales of fantastic feats and formidable foes. Of course, some of those foes were her own bitter rivals, such as competing female correspondent Elizabeth Bisland. Neck and neck and hand in hand, these two ladies took investigative journalism and the woman's word to the next level, often encountering other literary greats along the way. Such is the case in the following tale from our live show, more from The Secret Files of Nellie Bly, a little story we call The Meeting at Amiens. It was taped live in New York City on Sunday, February 24th, 2019. The stories my friend Nellie Bly published in her lifetime were colorful and exciting enough, but I have always maintained that it is the story behind the story that is, in the final balance, the most fascinating. This is doubly true in the case of Nellie Bly. Riding high from her first journalistic triumph, her expose of the horrid conditions at the woman's asylum at Blackwell's Island was looking for that next thing that would propel her ascent to the top of the newspaper world. She exposed frauds great and small. She conducted high-profile interviews with notables such as the anarchist and agitator Emma Goldman. <laughs> She followed the adventures of the rootin' tootin' shootin' wild women writers of Buffalo Bill Cody's traveling show. And just for the sake of a newspaper story, she even tried her hand at... Ha ha! Ha ha! That's it! Ha ha! Ha ha! You are much improved, Miss Bly! <laughs> Didn't think I would get the hang of it, eh, Professor Gebhardt? Nonsense! <laughs> <laughs> well, my best pupils happen to be <laughs> oh. <laughs> women! <laughs> nice patty, Miss Bly! <laughs> Oh, oh, I love this exercise. It's so oh, <laughs> exhilarating. <laughs> yes, yes, oh. you are becoming quite a good fencer. Oh, but not quite good enough. Oh, take that. <laughs> oh, close, but watch out for this. <laughs> oh, nice try. <laughs> Professor Gebhardt. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Have you ever read that book? Ah. Oh, oh. Around the world in 80 days. Ha! <laughs> yes! Ah, ooh, ooh, yes, yes. Oh, a wonderful bit of fancy. Yes, I quite admire it. Ha! Ha! Ah, yes, it is quite excellent. Ah, ah, I'd like to see if I could do that myself. <laughs> oh, you do watch yourself, huh? <laughs> Travel around the globe in 80 days. That's madness. You don't I'm not sincere! <laughs> 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 Miss Bly, in this office, we knock before we enter. Mr. Pulitzer, Mr. Brisbane. What's this all about, Miss Bly? What's that in your hand? Is that an epee? Yes, I've just submitted my latest story, Some Ladies That Fence. I've become quite adept with the foils as a result of this piece. My readers will be mad for it. Ah, ha, ha, unga! <laughs> yes, I saw the title. I will be looking it over soon. That still doesn't justify why you have battered your way into my office, Miss Bly. Ah, be careful with that pointy thing. <laughs> Aha! You must try it sometime. Such wonderful exercise. Aha! Oh, Miss oh. Bly! Uh-oh. Oh, fiddlesticks. I'm so sorry, Mr. Pulitzer. I, I... Re- that was a birthday present from a very dear friend. I'll reimburse you, Mr. Pulitzer. In fact, I will buy you ten of those if I can get your backing for my most brilliant idea yet. Nellie, Nellie, maybe you should... You know what this is, don't you? Oh, my ears. Can you not just lay it on my desk gently, huh? Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. We are a serious newspaper, Miss Bly. 
Why do you slam this piece of juvenile fiction on my desk? Monsieur Verne is a writer of fiction, yes, but a special kind of fiction. Speculative fiction. Fiction that might come true someday. I believe I can make this work of fiction into a real-life work of fact. What are you saying, Nellie? In this book, Phileas Fogg is able to travel around the world in 80 days. What if I attempt to follow in his footsteps? Bah! Men have tried, and men have failed. Men have? What about me? <laughs> it would be the greatest story this newspaper ever told. <laughs> Miss Bly, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> you think it's funny, eh? Miss Bly, no! Ah, that sound, that, that was a gift from... Miss Bly, I am most certainly going to dock your pay for this. Oh, oh my poor ears. Brisbane. What do we do with her? All she gives is trouble and earache. She is quite good, you know, Mr. Pulitzer. It's a good thing she sells my newspapers. I'll, I'll talk to her. Uh, but, Mr. Pulitzer? What is it, Brishbane? You'll forgive me for saying it, but I actually think we should consider her idea. Going around the world in 80 days. Heck, she might even beat Phileas Fogg's time. <laughs> Maybe she can't. Doesn't matter. I guarantee not one newspaper has even thought of performing such a stunt. Oh, no. You're serious, aren't you, Brishbane? Nellie Bly, a young girl goes around the world in 80 days. Think about it. It could be the story of the century. You are serious. Oh, God help me. Mr. Pulitzer, the last thing you want her to do is go to one of our rivals with this idea. So what do you say? It took me about a year, but I finally persuaded Joseph Pulitzer to get behind this crazy idea and send this 25-year-old budding female reporter on a trip around the world. On the morning of November 14th, 1889, she boarded the steamer, August Victoria, bound for England. To amplify interest, she now boasted that she would complete the trip in not 80 days, but 75. One of her very stringent demands was that she be able to make the trip unchaperoned by male or female. She carried only a small valise for a few changes of undergarments, some toiletries, and a few other essentials. Joseph Pulitzer supplied her with cash, gold, and 200 pounds in English banknotes, which she carried in a small pouch tied around her neck. She wore a plaid, checkered, wool deerstalker cap and matching overcoat. I hid it from everyone at the time, but I was worried sick that something would happen to her, and I tortured myself for being party to something that could have led to her being injured or far worse. There's much worse out there in this world that is dangerous, and there are a million ways to die. Luckily, that never happened. She completed the journey and made it back safe and sound. Even Mr. Pulitzer was impressed. So impressed, he chartered a special private luxury train to bring her back home to New York. Yes, Nellie Bly returned to us without a scratch. But there was one incident in particular, an incident that was left out of the series of articles and even her book, Around the World in 72 Days. On the first leg of her journey, Nellie left England by steamship and boarded the luxurious Calais Mediterranean Express, better known to us English speakers as the Blue Train. It was a fine way to travel, despite certain unavoidable discomforts. Hello. Excuse me, you're Nellie Bly, aren't you? Why, I... Now, don't you try and tell me different. Well, if you already know who I am, why do you Games! Ask? Games! Who doesn't love a little game? Peter Garvey's my name, English correspondent for the Daily Telegraph. Please, please call me Pete. Mr. Garvey, I'm trying to finish my breakfast. I'd appreciate oh, it if you... You're much handsomer than the other American girls I've seen on my travels. Oh, but I'm being too forward, aren't I? Not very English of me, I suppose. It's because I'm a journalist, you see. We're taught to pick and pry at things, are we not? Mr. Garvey, please tell me, 
Are you looking for a scoop or a romantic evening? Why should a bloke have to settle for one or the other, eh? <laughs> Your chances are a bit better at getting the scoop. A bit better. Well, questions are questions, I suppose. Ask one and I'll see if it is fit to answer. All right, then. Here's one. What do you think about that gal from your country, Elizabeth Bisland? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar. <laughs> not familiar? <laughs> How is that possible? Why, should I know who she is? Well, for one, she's been hired by Cosmopolitan magazine to do precisely what you're doing now. Circumnavigate the globe all by herself. What? What? What's this? Uh, secondly, she's also on this train with us. And third... I'm seated at the table right next to yours. <laughs> Miss Bly, Elizabeth Bisland, pleased to meet you. Oh, well, I, um... Pleased to meet you, Elizabeth. This isn't true, Elizabeth, is it? You're not... Racing around the world to beat the fictional record of one Phileas Fogg? <laughs> yes, it is quite true. Uh, this is all in jest, is it not? Mr. Garvey, this is your doing. Admit it. Suppose it's time for me to put on my earnest face. This is no joke, no jest, Miss Bly. So, if this is true, you are racing against me then, Miss Bisland. If that's the way you wish to perceive it. I'd rather not perceive it that way. When did you start your journey? The same day you did. Well, I'll be. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. <laughs> if you could only see the look on your face now, Miss Bly. <laughs> oh, shut up, you. <laughs> Not very ladylike language, Miss Bly. You don't know what unladylike is, Mr. Garvey. Don't make me show you. Miss Bly, remember, we are not just members of the press, but also members of the fairer sex. Let us not neglect to compose ourselves in such a fashion. Miss Bisland, this will prove to be a rugged journey. Are you not worried how someone as delicate and dainty in appearance as you seem will contend with the billows of engine soot and swarms of fruit flies? Manners and upbringing have taught me not to judge others solely by their personal appearance, Miss Black. Oh, I'm writing all of this down. Oh, like hell you are. Give me that. Such language, my dear. Oh, come on, Miss Bly. It's not like that. Elizabeth, my darling friend and colleague, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. There, you can write that down, Mr. Garvey. I wish you every good fortune, Miss Bly, and a very exciting and eventful, but safe, journey. You can also quote me, Mr. Garvey. Thanks. Oh, it's a pity, you know. What is? Oh, I had this absolute humdinger of an idea. Yes? Oh, but I don't have the connections that you have, Miss Bly. What do you mean? I thought it would be absolutely enchanting as part of my adventure to make a special stop at the home of Jules Verne in Amiens. We're only a few hundred miles away from there now. <laughs> Jules Verne, of course. Well, that is a smashing idea. Crikey, that is a cracking good idea. But how would I go about doing such a thing? I wouldn't even know where to begin. Oh, but it makes for a lovely idea just the same. Oh, could you imagine it? Me chatting with Jules Verne himself, the author who has inspired my journey, and getting to share that with my readers. Publicity on top of publicity. Oh, wouldn't that be something? If you two don't mind, there's something I need to attend to. Good day. Good day. Good day, Miss Bly. There she goes. You think she took the bait? A coarse, vainglorious, ill-bred buffoon like Nellie Bly? You bet your sweet life she did. She's making her move now. A sucker. She's going to get that meeting with Monsieur Verne, you know. Yes, I hope she does. It will take her off the trajectory long enough to give me the lead in this race I've been praying for. Yes, have a nice long visit, Nellie. It's a race against time, and for Nellie Bly and Elizabeth Bisland, it's a race against each other. Who will triumph? Find out after this break. This episode is brought to you by Wix. Wix is the place to go to build your very own professional website. We've been very happily using Wix to build and maintain FiresideMysteryTheater.com since 2014. And over 140 million people and millions of other businesses can't be wrong because they use Wix too. Using Wix is one of the easiest things we do at Fireside Mystery. Now, whether you're a technology guru or a Luddite like some of us here at FMT, Wix is intuitive and offers really powerful tools to help you push the limits of web design. Drag and drop with finesse and panache, my friends. 
Choose from over 500 stunning templates or start from scratch. There are hundreds of design features and apps to play around with so you can customize your site to stand apart from the crowd and grow your brand online. Everything you do is automatically optimized for any device. And as a perfectionist, I love being able to switch between desktop view and smartphone tablet view so I can easily make tiny adjustments. Want to build a site for your business? There are lots of business features to manage your workflow, boost productivity with automation, and instantly connect and build customer relationships. Or how about a site to showcase your art, your music, your writing? Add HD video, image and media galleries. Use killer design effects. Wix has the tools you need to make the website you need. Get started now with 10% off by going to wix.com slash podcast. That's wix.com slash podcast and get 10% off. So easy. Wix.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the meeting at Amiens. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Bly. I am uh, here for you. You you sent for me? Uh, yes, yes. You must be Albert. Oui, Mademoiselle. That is me. Here, take my hand. Merci, Albert. Ah, up we go. And... Uh, oh, I'm good. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> voilà. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to our beautiful country. I will take you straight to the house of Miss Rover. Uh, he is expecting you, no? Yes, yes, he is. Uh, but, Albert, please be aware Oh, that... oh, oh, mademoiselle, I know. You must be back to catch the train at 4.15, no? It's absolutely critical that I not miss that train. If I miss that train, I will suffer a major setback. Albert will not fail you, mademoiselle. Thank you. I'm taking a huge risk coming out here to see Monsieur Verne. I'm going 180 miles out of my way to do it. But it's too good an opportunity to pass up. Ah, he writes the book, you take the journey. <laughs> right? This is perfect, no? It will be worth it. I will give my readers quite a thrill. I still can't believe I'm doing this. I am very excited to tell you the truth. Yes, it is true. Nellie Bly and Jules Verne met once and one time only in Amiens, France, as Nellie made her famous journey around the globe. It is a very interesting but brief entry in the much more expansive narrative. Their historic meeting lasted all but three hours. It went something like this. Is it possible that this child is traveling around the world alone? Why, she is a mere baby? Oh, Monsieur Verne... I must say, I am quite impressed with your home. Oh, thank my wife, Honorine. I am hopeless as a keeper of any house. Not so hopeless, my husband. Uh, Monsieur Verne, may I ask you a question? But of course, that is the reason we are here, no? I'm curious. So many of your books have American settings. I'm assuming you visited the United States in your travels. Oui, but just once, for a few days, during which I saw Niagara Falls. C'est magnifique. Really? Well, how could that be? Your books are terrifically authentic. Ah, uh, the imagination makes anything possible, ma chère. Now tell me, where are you going on this mad excursion of yours? Brindisi, Port Said, Ismailia, Suez, Aden, Colombo, Penang, Singapore, Hong Kong, Yokohama, San Francisco, and back to New York in just 75 days. But, but why do you not go to Bombay, as Phileas Fogg did? Well, I am anxious to save time, Monsieur Verne. Well, if you do it in 79 days, I shall applaud, with both hands. But 75 days, mon Dieu, that would be a miracle. I remain doubtful. But I wish you well, just the same. And that, more or less, was a summary of said encounter. But as I have said more than once, and this case was no different, there's always another story behind the story. The following part of this account you are about to hear was ultimately relegated to Nellie's secret files. Could such a wild and unsettling thing have been possible? In all the time I knew Nellie, I never had a reason to doubt her. So, what do you think, Miss Bly? 
It is a little eerie, if you don't mind my saying so. Well, some people might think that. It's uh, not really a lab, though. It's just a machine. It is a dreadful scene, I say. Oh, you do not like any of my toys on there, Rin. I will say it is truly a mechanical marvel, Monsieur Verne. Like something imagined in one of your stories. Well, I like to write of things that are very close to becoming true. Then they become true soon after. <laughs> oh, Anarin. Yes, Jules. Please, Anarin, pour our lovely little guest a glass of our favorite burgundy. Oh, certainly. With pleasure. Here you are, my dear. Oh, I don't really drink, but thank you. Don't drink? Oh, you are very much a lady, and no. Oh, I like to think so. You are an impressive little thing. Hmm. I should like to make a character after you someday. So, tell me about your next novel. Uh, I think perhaps I am finished. May perhaps not. I do not know. My, uh, my health is poor, you see. Yes. Ever since you were shot in the leg. You were shot? <sighs> it is why I limp like this. Who would shoot a man like Jules Verne? My nephew. He fired upon me. He is quite a man. Ah. <sighs> Is that what happens then? Uh, what do you mean by that, Honorine? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all, husband. <gasps> ah, it has stopped. So it has. Uh, excuse us, Honorine. I'd uh, like to show Miss Bly something. In your study? Oui, where I create. What? Very well. Come, mon ami. Uh, come this way. <laughs> Allow me. This is your study? Oui. Oh, it's just as I imagined it would be. Really? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> I knew you would notice. It's beautiful. It's the same map I used while I was writing around the world in 80 days. The ink you see here is in my own end. This is how I trace the journey of Phileas Fogg. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, put your hand in mine. Uh, all right. And we'll trace the journey on the map together. Monsieur Verne. Oui, mon petit cher. I would, I would greatly appreciate it if you would not press in quite so close to me. Nelly, I could see it in your eyes. You could sense my desire. Uh, m Monsieur Verne, I have a tremendous respect for you and your work, but I must ask you to let me go. Don't fight it. Uh, Honorine, your wife is... is no, uh, that doesn't matter. We are alone. Uh, we are... Uh, Monsieur Verne, unhand mm, me. Unhand me at once. Mm, unhand... Mm, ah! oh, 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 my bad leg. Ah! God, why did you strike me there? Oh, no, no, I, I, I cannot get up. Oh, good. Now I'm getting out of here. You're not going anywhere. Oh, yes, I am. Watch me. <laughs> oh, 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 what on earth? Timon, don't let her escape. Oh, heaven's to mercy. You, you, you ogre! Uh, uh, Nelly, put that back at once. That sword is a family heirloom. I'll put it back. You just let me leave. You are staying here. Demon will not relent. You will not leave this house until I say so. You, you stand back. K keep your distance. It is hopeless. Drop the sword. He will not relent. I'm warning you. Keep away. Uh, keep away. Keep away from me. Keep away. Uh, Oh, my God. It, it, it was self-defense. You, 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 you destroyed him. Is, is that supposed to be his, his blood? I, I've never seen blood that color before. Where? Oh, 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 I, I... Shut up, Jules, Madame Byrne. I applaud you, Miss Bly. With both hands, I might add. Uh, Madame Byrne, what happened here? What is going on? Well, that takes care of that, I would say. Good reasons to that awful rubbish. Uh, I, I don't understand. I'll say this much, dear husband. 
I doubt you will be able to afford to have another Timo made. Uh, I, I suppose not. Oh, oh my goodness! What, what time is it? Oh, it's Albert! Uh, my apologies, Madame Verne. I, I must leave. I cannot miss that train. Yes, you do not want to miss that train, do you? Oh, oh, oh my, oh my! So it's true. Those two great titans, Nellie Bly and Jules Verne, did meet that one and only time. That's right. They never met again. There was not even a single note of correspondence between them in all the years that followed. Not even a note of congratulations when Nellie defied the odds and beat Phileas Fogg's record. Now that you know what I know, can there be any wonder why? Arthur Brisbane was played by David Linton. Professor Gebhard and Timon were played by Michael Pate. Joseph Pulitzer was played by Alan LaForest. Pete Garvey was played by James Kleinman. Elizabeth Bisland was played by Casey LaForest. Albert was played by Eric Davy Gislison. Jules Verne was played by James Reeser. Honorine Verne was played by Mary Murphy. And the part of Nellie Bly was played by me, Ali Silva. The song A Hot Time in the Old Town Tonight by Joe Hayden was performed by Martina De Silva, accompanied by Nico Slater. The Meeting at Amiens was written by Sylvan Sandovar and directed by Holly Payne Strange. More from The Secret Files of Nellie Bly was produced by Gustavo Rodriguez and me for Fireside Mystery Productions. Our musical score is improvised and performed by Nico Slater. Our sound effects designer and engineer is Joe Young. Our technical director at the Slipper Room is Johnny Goddard. Our production assistant is Brontis Shane Orengo. Jason Graves composed our theme music, and I manage our audio post-production. Just like our inspiring Ms. Bly, the small band of storytellers and audio drama makers of Fireside Mystery Theater work very hard to bring you deliciously dark and delightful audio entertainment. 
but we need your help to sustain this creepy thing we love and to enable our fireside flames to grow. Consider becoming our very own Patreon patron. For a dollar or two or more a month, you can provide vital support for what we do and help us to achieve our future goals. In exchange, we have some special perks for our Patreon patrons. How about a postcard from Sunken Harbor? Exclusive discounts on our merch? A personalized audio thank you from one of our fabulous cast members? A classy limited edition lapel pin? We have perks for all different monthly sustainer levels. Check them out and become an FMT Patreon patron today by going to patreon.com slash fireside mystery theater or just follow the link from our website. As ever, we are so grateful for any support you give to help us keep the embers of our fireside flickering. If you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Fireside Mystery. Go on and like us on Facebook too and stay up to date with all things FMT. If you're in the New York City area, join us for our next live podcast taping on Sunday, March 31st at 5 p.m. at the Slipper Room. We'll be knee-deep in tales from the sordid studio of the Late Night Radio Show. Tickets are on sale now at slipperroom.com or follow the link from our website. Coming up next from Fireside Mystery Theater, more mystery awaits our dear Ms. Nellie Bly. Let's see if she lives to tell the tale along with the 18 who survive. Nellie inspires us with her daring spirit of adventure as she defied the greatest of odds and obstacles. But even this intrepid journalist knew when it was best to mind the shadows. 